Hey, welcome everybody. Thanks for watching Journey Online. I'm gonna jump right in. We're in the last part of a series called Tough Pills to Swallow. Kind of the subject matter has been things we need to probably think about, do something about, but sometimes we don't want to. We're in the last piece of that. Today we wanna dig in. I wanna start with a verse in Isaiah as kind of the way to get there. Let me push that button again. Uh, it says this, seek the Lord while you can find him. That's where it starts. Call on him while he's near. It's talking to people who have God as part of their life. And it says, seek, find, call. And the reason for that is because you're going to need him. You do need him more than you think. Let me show you where he goes past there. Then he talks to people who God is not a part of their life. He says this, let the wicked change their ways and banish the very thought of doing wrong. Let them turn to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. For those who God is a big part of their life, he said, I want you to seek and I want you to call out. I want you to be near because you need him. To those far from God, he says, change, banish, turn away. You know why? Because you need him. That's why. And then he gives us this as kind of a wrap up for it. He said, because my thoughts are nothing like your thoughts. He's just saying, if left to you, you're not just going to miss the path a little bit, but you're going to go through things you were never intended to go through. My ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. It almost seems like he's being prideful. He's, you know why he says, my thoughts are nothing like yours and my ways are far beyond yours? is because his ways are nothing. His paths are nothing like ours. His thoughts are far beyond. It's not like a little bit, God than me. It's like, no, you need me. And without me, you are going to deal with things you were never intended to deal with. All of us have had a life where that has been the case. That we have been in areas of life. We've had parts of our life where we've been deeply hurt, deeply wounded, deeply scarred. We've dealt with trauma and all kinds of things. And you know why? Because people have not heeded this. That we've gone our ways and our parents and our parents' parents and our culture have gone ways and they were nothing like his ways. We've, we've, we've encountered thoughts that were nothing like his thoughts. As a result, uh, sometimes this is what it feels like to me. I grew up in a world going to church a lot and it felt like in this world, God trying to protect us it feels like what he did is he became, this is just my opinion now, I'm not saying it's everybody else's. Sometimes it seems like God is the cosmic hall monitor. It feels like God in his attempt to protect us just became the thou shalt not and you better. You better watch out, you better not cry. I know when you're sleeping, I know when you're awake. So be good for goodness sake, you better, you better, you better. I kind of grew up thinking God was just this ticked off old guy who was constantly saying, no, slow down, be quiet, don't run. I like to run. I don't want to be quiet. Everything I want, do you like that? Yes. Well, stop it. It's wrong. Whatever it was. And it just wore me out. And at times it felt like this was the God that was the God. And I missed the piece of why. Why does he have those rules? Why does he say better not? Why does he say do not? Why does he say you should? And it's not because he just picked random stuff. It's because he was trying to protect me from a life I didn't want to experience. But I have. I've experienced all kinds of things in life. And as a result, I often take that experience and now it becomes part of my experience toward other people. We could say it this way. Because of the things I've experienced, the hurt or the pain or the scars or the wounding in my life, that broken often leads to broken. People who have experienced brokenness often contribute to brokenness in other people. That's me. I've done that. That hurt people often hurt others. People who have been hurt or hurting people often because of that lash out toward others or we take our broken or our hurt and we throw it on somebody else. Poorly loved people, which is all of us, by the way. We were made to be perfectly loved and we weren't. Even the people who've loved us most, hey, I love my kids as much as you can love anybody or anything in the world, and they have not been perfectly loved, poorly loved people, usually love poorly. Because it's what we've lived in and experienced our whole life, it's hard to do better than that. And so where we land is in a very broken world. Let me just show you some statistics really quick, and then we'll do something a little bit different. Uh, one in five Americans 
have been sexually molested. That is deep hurt. Hurting people hurt people. Broken people, broken leads to broken. That number, if we were to say people watching that, that means a bunch of you who are watching this fit that. That means as a church, when we fill up this whole room, that means there are not one or two or three or four, but 10 or 20 or 30 or 40 that this fits. That is the truth. It is a painful truth to even acknowledge. Let me give you another one. One in four have been beaten by their parents, and I don't mean spanked. I mean beaten by their parents, leaving marks. In America, these are just truths. One in three couples have engaged in some kind of physical violence, and I don't mean something silly or fun or whatever. I mean literally what it says. One in three. And some of you who are watching this goes, you're telling my story right now. Here's another 25% of us grew up with an alcoholic in our immediate family. Somewhere around our normal daily life, we grew up with somebody who was fighting or losing or battling. And I'll just tell you, this is hurting people. And often the splash over from that hurts people. I'll just give you one more because we could do these all day. One out of eight people when they were growing up saw their mother being hit by a father or another significant other in their life. I say all of this just because these are big, deep, ugly wounds and they're experienced by people, not a few, not occasionally, by many, many, many of us. Now we could keep listing till we get all of us to some level. But what I'm saying is God said, listen, I've got a way and I want to tell you the way and I want to be with you because your ways are going to lead to places that are really painful. You know what he said? You're going to end up finding broken, hurt, and poorly loved all through your life. And you've experienced that and so have I. What do we do when we experience that? That's what our goal is today. I've got some friends I want to introduce you to and I think they're going to help us at least begin to unpack a little bit of that. So here we go. Hey, I want you guys to meet my friends, Eric and Ashley. Uh, Eric and Ashley are people that hang around with us here at church. For me, they're people who help me. When I have a conversation with them, I always feel like I walk away better or challenged or, uh, yeah, that's probably about it. I always go home and tell my wife, hey, I was there. I, I, here's why I'm late. I was talking with those guys. I made them late, but it helped me so much. So here's where I've just been. Uh, I've been talking about these things, about being broken, hurt, or poorly loved. And I felt like that's the perfect introduction for you guys. You can be broken, hurt, and poorly loved. That'll be the three of us. We've all felt that stuff. You guys specialize in helping people like me who have been through those things, put words to that and learn to care for that or learn to move past that or learn to heal from that. So I wanna ask you some questions. You guys just shoot from the hip, go wherever you want to, but there's lots of people who are watching, listening to this that I feel like will resonate with it and it'll help out. So I kinda of wanna start with this. I gave all these statistics about one in four people who've been through that and they're all horrible traumatic moments. They're by anybody's standards. You go, wow, that's tough stuff. What does that do to a person like when they've experienced those kind of wounds or those kind of traumas, those kind of pains? What is that? What's the result of all that? Help us with that, Ashley. Um, I think we have to start at the beginning. And um, by the beginning, I mean in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. Because in the beginning, the, the God was face to face. Right, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit were face to face in perfect love. And so we were created from that image. And we were created for relationship. And so most often we are wounded within the context of relationship, but our healing will come within the context of relationship. But on, and here on earth, relationships are painful. I mean, a tree could fall and that would be harmful, but it's gonna be harmful because it has something to do with relationship in some way. And so, um, in the, we were created for perfect love. And so perfect love um, means that there is no wounding, there is no pain, there is no harm. And so I think one of the things that we do that's really unfortunate is we compare our stories with one another. We minimize our own stories. We, um, we, can, we It's hard to be honest about our own stories because they were painful and there are parts of them that we either consciously or subconsciously just forget 
There are a lot of things that I can't remember about my own story. Mm -hmm. And that's not because I choose to forget, it's because that is a protective part of me. Like it would be too overwhelming to remember that part. And so um, number one, we normalize and minimize our own pain. And then number two, we often compare it to other people. And in that place, we're really doing ourselves a disservice because um, I can say, well, Eric's been through so much and at least I haven't been through what he's been through. Yeah. And, I, and I'm not being honest about my own story. But if I can learn to overlay my story to what I was created for, the Garden of Eden, like face-to-face -face perfect love, then I can more accurately name it. I've heard you talk about this before, uh, about those things that are in our past, they're not really in our past, that happened in our past, that we still carry around and how it affects us, even it affects our mind, our soul, even our body. Sure. Talk to me about that for just a second. Yeah. So back to being created in the image of God, like we have a physical being, we have an emotional being, and then we have our spiritual being, right? And so when we encounter any kind of pain, it lands in each of those three areas. Just like, um, like imagine if I go home and I'm going to go home and eat lunch and um, I am going to eat food, I'm going to ingest it, my body's going to um, digest it, metabolize it, and then get rid of it, right? Well, when harm comes, very often we ingest the harm but we don't know how to get rid of it Absolutely. we don't know how to metabolize it and digest it and get rid of it so it just like compacts and compacts and just like if i ate and ate and ate and never got rid of my food it would come out sideways like yeah. i would have a terrible stomach ache and you might say something and i'm going to snap at you like you didn't cause my stomach ache but i'm certainly taking it out on you yeah. because it's coming out sideways the emotional things that we endure are exactly the same. Like we have our emotional stomach is just overflowing and our pain is coming out sideways on the people that we don't want to hurt. Yeah, that's good. I, I, I have experienced that and even worse because I've done that. I, yes. Others have gotten to experience that or had to experience that through me. Let me ask you, Eric, for... I read through those stuff and it talks about one in so many are molested or this many who've been through. And I hear those things and I go, those are huge. That's like a big javelin stabbed in my side kind of thing, wound. For somebody like me, I would go, listen, I've been through some stuff, but I haven't been through that kind of stuff. I, I'm not sure that I'm the poster child for that. So what would you say to somebody that said, that's not my life. I don't have those deep wide open gaping wounds what would you where do you go with that um first of all very thankful for that yeah. um and secondly just because those things didn't happen back to what ashley was saying we're created for perfect love and because of that when we're not loved perfectly um, and we don't love perfectly there are wounds hurts pain that comes out of that and so um I had a hard time with that when I first started on this road as far as I was taught very early in my life that you don't talk about things, you just move through them and if you did, you're weak at best. And so um, to actually walk into a room like this and I very actually sat in the very back row yeah. and said I need to keep this as far away from me as I can, I'm willing to listen to it. But I need to see if this is safe, if it lines up scripturally, if it lines up with um, my experience on some level before I could even begin to step towards it because it was just so far out of bounds from anything that I was ever raised around or was willing to take a look at. And so, Yeah, I, I know there's people who are watching that have that, uh, this all sounds a little psycho babbly to me. And I'll be honest, some of that, me too, I can get to that point really quick you know, get out of my head uh, thing. I'm not the touchy feely, whatever. For people who are watching that, I think it really helps to understand that, well, one, it, it's okay that that's not your particular style of life. And it doesn't mean, uh, I kind of grew up hearing, even in the Christian world, uh, kind of get over it. That's the past, Put the let the past be the past, move on. And I think that is the goal. I don't want to live in my past. But I love what you talked about, that if I don't digest and metabolize that, that the belief that just because I don't want to think about it, that it's not there or I'm not going to deal with it is, 
I think that's what I like to do with it. I've got to go to the dentist later. The belief that whatever is going on, I just, if I don't go, I won't have to mess with it. Right. Um, unfortunately, right. once you go, uh, it'll eventually hurt bad enough. I love, I love that. That, that helps a lot. And, and let me just say this, Chris, is that like, yes, there are people who have not just had one javelin in their side, but over and over and over. Also, there are, there are people who, like you and a lot of other people who are like, well, I've never had a javelin. Like, I don't even know what a javelin is. Like, I don't have context for that. But I promise you weren't left perfectly. I know that for very certain. It's true. And so for all of those little paper cuts that you have endured, a thousand paper cuts will still make you bleed to death. And so um, I think that is another thing to just consider that we're not, we're not trying to sell or peddle this idea of like only people with severe trauma need to just take a look at how pain affects them. No, we live in a broken world and we all, I mean, whether it's, whether it's from our families of origin or the lady at the grocery store, we are going to encounter pain and we just have to be honest about how we are, how that's manifesting in our bodies. Well, let's do this. Let's assume everybody watching this. So here's what you get with our audience. Is there some people who couldn't be in church today for whatever reason? And so this is their replacement. So some of them are sitting on the couch with their family watching it. Some are on their phones. Some people are traveling. Some people are checking it out going, I wonder if this whole journey place is, is kooky and to which I'm not sure if this is gonna help or not, but we've got lots of different people for lots of different reasons. Let's just assume everybody watching would agree that I've got some broken parts, I've got some unhealed things, I've got some deep wounds in my life. Okay, there. As a result of that, where do you start uh, if you want to heal, if you wanna, that not to be part of your story if, if you want that to be out of the this is causing my body to hurt it's causing stress in my life it's causing headaches it's causing these it causes ongoing issues where do you start what would be a first thing um i think for me I, there are a lot of things in my story that i was unwilling either 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 unwilling or unable to just name and deal with <clears throat> until i had children even being married to Eric, um, we got married and I was a train wreck. I was a mess when we got married and I had my little fit about why did I have to marry a counselor? And I'm, there's nothing wrong with me. And at one point the Lord had to pat my little heart and say, honey, you needed to live with a therapist. <laughs> and so um, in those places that I knew that I needed to deal with things, until I had children, until I had someone to do it for that mattered more than me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And so I, I think that that's a great place to start of like, who does it matter for? Who, if you're not willing to encounter your story, if you're not willing to look at your pain, if you're not willing to name the parts of your life that have been hurtful for yourself, who are you willing to do it for? And then I think the next thing would be is find someone safe. Someone that's not gonna tell you like, get over it, you know, like just dry it up. Um, but someone that's going to just like cry with you, be broken hearted for you and with you. Um, maybe that's a friend, maybe that's a pastor, maybe that's um, a recovery group or Celebrate Recovery or a small group, but someone, um, someone has to look at us face to face to see, hey, to be able to say to us and meet us in that place where we want so badly to isolate and be alone, but that's not what we were created for. We were created for relationship. Back to like we were wounded within the context of relationship. Our healing will come within the context of relationship. Eric, I've heard you say before the thing about the difference in seeing your face and the reflection. Talk, tell us a, just a, a little bit about that. Right, right. So um, you guys can see something today that I've never seen. Um, you see my face as it is. I've only seen a reflection of my face. And so we have a very difficult time seeing all the things about us through our own eyes um, because we can't see ourselves fully. And so back to being created for a relationship, um, hurt in relationship, healed in the context of relationship, making ourselves vulnerable um, 
to step into those relationships that people can see us and uh, through a lens of compassion and also care that will help us see the places that we've been hurt, sit with us there first and then begin to help us or watch us come up with how we want to move forward um, and not getting those things reversed. <laughs> you know, hey, here's the five steps to get you through that right there doesn't work. But when someone can attune to us and witness to that place of pain, make it safe, a lot of times we'll just see it for ourselves. And then if not, they can help us see that. And it does help us begin to grow and move forward. So here's what I'm hearing. All of us got spots, pain, hurt, wounds. We can all just agree to that. Uh, there's a piece that says for I've got to I've got to give a name to that or I've got to give I've got to bring that to the surface and acknowledge that it is what it is. I can't just say ah it's not a big deal, that wounds are, are big deals and need to be dealt with even if it's many little as compared to what seems to be one big they're all equally. I hear that I hear the need that I need people I need to do this in relationship. That's even harder to do because where my hurt has come from usually has a name attached. Right. And so to put more names right. attached is seems almost counterintuitive, exactly. but I hear that part. So tell me this, we're in church, so we love talking about Bible stuff, spiritual stuff. We get all into that geeky world. Uh, forgiveness, like we love throwing out that God has forgiven and we're supposed to forgive. And he even says, if you don't forgive, you're forgiven. And it gets all kinds of deep in that. Where does forgiveness begin to play a part in this healing from relational hurts? Ooh, soapbox is kind of my my soapbox is kind of forgiveness because as Christians, I, I believe that we treat forgiveness like a trinket that we throw around, like oh yeah, I forgave, oh I forgave, you know this horrible awful story, and I'm I'm over that. I I, I forgave him already. And first thing I think we need to understand about forgiveness is when harm comes to us, whether it's tiny paper cut paper cuts or javelins in our side. Um, our hearts are like mason jars, like a glass globe. And when it drops on this concrete floor, it shatters. It's not one piece that I forgive for, especially if it's a big harm, right? Like it's, it's a thousand. And this is the part where, you know, we think, well, I forgave for this one piece, so I'm over it. But then like I still, when that person comes around, um, for me, because of harm that I experienced when I was a child, I would smell a smell in a group that s reminded me of what he smelled like, um, and my body would freeze, and I would get sick to my stomach. And I didn't know why, I just knew when I smelled that smell, I have a reaction because I hadn't worked through that part. And so forgiveness to me is the most important part because I don't want to feel that way always, but I can't get past that feeling until I believe we work through forgiveness. And if we are going to be followers of Jesus, forgiveness is hard. We call it the pain cave because when Jesus forgave, he was hanging on a cross. He had been betrayed and abandoned and neglected and abused and persecuted and spit on. And from that place, he said, I forgive. But we try to forgive from our heads. We try to think about, oh yeah, I think about that thing and so I'm gonna forgive them. You know, I don't wanna deal with that anymore so I'm just gonna forgive. But forgiveness is truly a feeling. Like we have to feel what we are forgiving for just like Jesus did. But somehow we like try to bypass the cross yeah. and step into restoration and it does not work that way. It does not work that way. I can see why because to forgive not just analytically oh means I got to feel some of that again. And it hurts And yeah, bad. the last thing I want to do is feel something again that yes. I didn't like the first time. And so it makes sense on the why. Yes. And, and then the only way to restoration is through the cross. Yeah. We all know that, like we all are in church and we all understand the story of it was from, it was the cross and then there was restoration. But we like to bypass the cross part. We like to See. bypass the pain part and then walk into restoration. But we, if we are unwilling to go through all those pieces of glass on the ground and work through forgiveness, which is tedious and it's long. And I, tell, I, I believe personally that forgiveness is not something we should push people toward. It is something we just need to graciously set aside and make space for. It may take you a long time. Yeah. 
to work to the forgiveness piece, and that's okay, as long as you are working through it. Well, on that subject, Eric, help me with this. I'm a guy who, okay, I can point back to a few things in my life that have been pretty deep hurts. And to be honest with you, worked on forgiveness and felt progress. And I went from feeling that I hoped horrible things would happen to that person every day. Uh, don't mess with me because I'll think that about you or you, by the way. <laughs> uh, you know, praying that God would somehow make things grow from their face and they would experience what I wanted them to do is experience what I felt like I experienced right now, I don't know why I thought that would help but I kind of just thought it would be just yes at least my version of just right. I went from that feeling that all the time to feeling that some and I feel like that was me working through some forgiveness stuff um, to to not really thinking about that a whole lot and even in the last few weeks I had a couple of moments it was almost like my version of PTSD that I just in a conversation something was brought up and a really sharp reply and some different things I felt myself back in that moment and all of a sudden some of the same anger some of the same resentment some of the same that sorry blankety blank right in my and it, I was so disappointed in me because I thought I'm past that like I forgave I've done me and God we've healed what do you what do you say to me help me in that moment of going, you, you big dummy, you're right back where you started. Well, first of all, compassion. Yeah. Right. Um, because in that place where you were hurt, where we were hurt, um, to show up with compassion for ourselves, where we maybe want to push contempt towards ourselves, is um, counterintuitive. And so um, I want to draw a line just down the middle. So you, we have this place over here where it's showing back up from some things in our past that need to be addressed and then there's the things that are happening right here in the here and now these relationships okay and so those are two kind of different situations keeping close accounts up here when things are happening those are probably not going to show back up because you're dealing with those things in those relationships those things where we didn't have a choice didn't know about that and they're in our past and they like show up on us like on a Wednesday at coming through Starbucks for the way someone spoke like where'd that come from like I'm ready to come through the drive through at this person because she's being a to me and all of a sudden my tendency is to want to push that away which is very natural right it hurts we want to bring it close with compassion and just start asking some questions around like what's going on with that and as we begin to understand our story more and the connections between that I'll be able to make that connection like oh I, okay I see what's happening here and Remember, please remember, healing is like a onion. It's got layers to it. Um, and that's okay to revisit those places. It's like moving a, police, a piece of uh, furniture out of the way. I should talked about the, the mason jar breaking. Even when we go through a season of dealing with some things specifically um, that are happening uh, kind of intensely, we are still gonna, we still may come up with some uh, situations where we move the piece of furniture in life yeah. and we run into it. Yeah. And that's okay. Found a little leftover glass. Right. Yeah. It's okay. yeah, I think that's where mine was. Some furniture got moved. And all right, we've all got wounds. Acknowledge the new wounds. You're not going to move past them. You're not going to heal from them until you can bring them to the surface. Acknowledge you need people in your life. Relationship is where wounds begin. It's also the pathway to healing. Right. That's what I'm hearing, right? Yes. I'm trying to take notes so I can be better at this. <laughs> And then forgiveness has to be a piece in this puzzle. There is no healing completed without forgiveness happening because it's going to stay kind of the festering wound. And obviously God's a piece of that. We have to give ourselves space to do that. Um, and we have to recognize that it's layered. It's not a, I just had a good feeling. I'm going to have to enter into the pain of that some to allow it to become true forgiveness. All that's helpful. Super good. That's, I need all that stuff. Um, let me ask you one last thing. We're about out of time. So um, if you could wrap up all your thoughts, what you would just say to people who are watching this, some of them may know who you are. Some of them may never meet you in their life. But if you could just say, hey, I got about one minute. If I could just say this in love to you, what would that one thing be? Uh, for me, it'd be, ki be kind to yourself. Um, as you enter into this um, process, if you so choose, um, as you begin to see yourself and part of your story and the hurt, 
um, being kind to yourself is very important. Um, and um, that's where I would, that's where I'd lay it down. Well, he took mine. I mean, because it's just so important. There's so many parts of my life that I look back. I used to look back with such shame when I was a drug addict, when I did this, when I did all of these different things, when I was cruel, when I, whatever it was, and I am so just ashamed, right? I used to be ashamed. But then, so it's like I look at my story linearly, like, and I'm looking back through my life at like, oh, I did that. But if I can go above and I can like see my life looking down on it and I can see, oh, this poor little girl, like she went through so much. No wonder she turned to sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Like no wonder she did all these things and just being kind to myself in that place. And if I can be kind to myself, I'm not making excuses for other people um, in their dysfunction or how, and I won't even say dysfunction, let me say that differently, in the ways they keep themselves safe. Yeah. Because ultimately, it, we are just keeping ourselves safe. Yeah. And I do wanna say one more thing about forgiveness that I, didn't, that I think is super important. That um, I think we think about forgiveness as like going back, in, if I forgive, then I have to go back. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to go back. If you forgive, boundaries are a totally different conversation. That's another conversation for another day. But forgiveness does not mean you go back into a painful situation. I think what I take away from this, my one thing, I'm not even sure I say it to them as much as me, is that the man upside, that get over it side, um, I think the longer I live, the more I recognize that things don't go away because I don't acknowledge them. My bills don't, right, somebody right. will call, somebody will yeah. find you yeah. eventually. That my relationships don't just get better, that my wounds don't just heal. And I think the, old, the longer you live, just because maybe it's had more time to infect you, but it makes me say, I don't want to finish my life and I want to care for the people around me enough by being the best version that God made me to be. And I can't get there without some healing in that. So I think you guys have been super helpful, at least with me, if not for anybody else. And in the end, isn't this is the most important part. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm so grateful for you doing that. I'm going to wrap a few things up and then tell these people they can go about their day. But thank you so much. Yay, everybody give them a clap. There you go. Way to go. Man, I am so grateful for Eric and Ashley. It's so much for us to dig into. I don't know that that gave enough room for us to do a lot of uh, helpful, but it at least gets the conversation started. For all of us, we have got painful places in our life for many of us we kind of acknowledge that they're there but we've never dealt with them or they're still currently part of our life and like uh, eric said as that onion has many layers they keep finding their way up they keep finding that way their way back into our life we can't wish them away we can't just want them away that we sometimes have to walk through a process to find healing from them and healing doesn't always just occur matter of fact normally it doesn't and so thank them so much for that help. Let me finish up our talk today with just a couple of thoughts. The, the amazing thing about God, I said in the beginning that sometimes it seemed when I was growing up, God was kind of our cosmic hall monitor. He was just this don't do, don't do, don't do. But that's not true. It's the way it seemed to me. But that's not, as a matter of fact, just the opposite. I just want to leave you with one verse. I think our, uh, this is such a powerful piece. Here's what it says. We don't have a Savior who's out of touch with our reality. He's been through our weaknesses and testing, and He's experienced it all, all but the sin. That when we turn to God, He's not going, what? Suck it up, buttercup. Get over it. Not at all. He is hurt. He has been denied. He has been walked away from. He has been physically abused. He went through everything. He's been tempted. He's been forgotten. He's been made fun of. He's been trivialized. He's been ignored. Anything. He's had expectations cast upon him that were unreasonable. He's had accusations made of him that were completely unreasonable. And all of that he understands. And if you just kept reading to Hebrews for uh, the rest of 415, he says, and you can bring it all to me. I want you to bring that to me. I will come and when you come, you will find mercy for me. Wherever your pain is, a starting point is to identify it and turn to God with it and acknowledge that this is part of me 
and I'm opening it up to you. And when I open it up to you, here's the promise, you will never find him missing in action. You will never find his line busy. You will never go to voicemail. You will never get a, hey, I'm out of the office right now, but I'll, you'll never be put on hold. That he will meet you there. And I just wonder if today you have some areas of your life that you go, man, you can talk about all that. And I'm not even sure what to do with all of it, but I've got some deep hurts in my life. And I'll be honest with you, they keep me up uh, awake at night. Sometimes they wake me up in the morning. Sometimes I just look around and say, I don't understand why this ever happened to me. Sometimes I've created them and I feel so much shame and guilt because I've hurt others. And I don't know what to do with that. Could you at least start right now by saying to God, God, here, I identify this hurt. I identify this wound. I identify this pain. And I bring it to you. I accept the mercy you offer. Let it be a start. Let it be a little bit of healing that will start. And all the other things we talked about with Eric and Ashley, begin to apply those with bringing that to the surface, calling it what it is, allowing other people into your world to help you walk through that, other trusted, safe people. Forgiveness as a piece of that, but it has to start right here because when you come to him, he is not out of touch with your stuff. He is waiting on you. And the reason he said, seek me while you can find me is because you need me and I need him. And can I just encourage you to turn your hurts to him first. So God, help us with that today. Thanks that you show up. Thanks that you care. Thanks that in all your perfection, you're not too big or too busy or too anything else to not offer mercy at the point of our need. Help us with that, we ask in your name. Amen. Thank you guys so much.